Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to another episode of accidentalmuslims.com in Durban. It is uh, a wonderful night and very interesting one because uh, we're going to be talking a bit about the new person here at, uh, well, not so new, uh, here at accidentalmuslims.com in Durban. And her name is Sister Sumer Jamal. Assalamu alaikum, how are you? Wa alaikum, assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm good, alhamdulillah, how are you doing? Good, good, yeah. Well, technically, it is a sister. Because <laughs> you are my sister. Um, so basically I wanted to introduce everyone to uh, the new head of Durban of AccidentalMuslim.com. We'd like to thank the team up in Cape Town heading it, uh, as well as those in Johannesburg for the support uh, for this decision. It was Shura made, we decided as a committee together uh, that we would like to, for me to hand it over to Sumeya uh, for many reasons and one of them also, as, as you know, is that the work that I'm now doing with Penny Appeal South Africa, uh, which is a charity that has started, it's a UK charity, now started in South Africa. So mm -hmm. we thought we would just do a, like official, unofficial handover uh, to Sumeya and get to know each other a little bit. So I think we'll start with Sumeya and she can tell us a little about herself. Okay, uh, well I'm 20 years old and I'm uh, currently a student at uh, UNISA, studying psychology at the moment. Uh, I'm also a radio presenter at Radio Islam International and a henna artist, I absolutely love henna. I like Hena. A little bit about me. <laughs> I like Hena, but I don't like the smell too much. Yeah, I know. Guys don't like the smell. I think girls too, you know. We don't like the smell, but the designs are pretty. That's true. And it's quite an art, uh, I must say. It is. It is an art. It's not, uh, I think not everybody can do it, uh, if I, you know, can say it in that way. But it's something which is fun, and I feel that I can let my creative juices out in that way. Apart from me talking, I love talking as well. Uh, but Hena is a way of me, when I'm just by myself, alone, uh, I just, you know, tend to feel that this just gives me some comfort. Fantastic. So you're studying at university at the moment, to mm -hmm. UNISA, and uh, psychology is your major. Right. And it's a Bachelor of Arts. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a Bachelor right. of Arts and uh, psychology, psychological counseling is what I'm basically doing. Yeah. Fantastic. And so tell us about it. I mean, what, what made you decide? I know you started off with media and communications mm -hmm. and then branched off with this. I mean, what, what happened there? What, what, why psychology? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, you know, being a radio presenter, I started uh, being a radio presenter when I was like 15 and a half. I joined with Radio Al Ansar and then I'm now with Radio Islam. And um, with that, I basically thought that, okay, radio presenting is something I really want to get into and it's something which um, I wanted to spend the rest of my life doing and I still want to do that. And when I got to campus, I was studying at Howard College, I started studying media and marketing and um, it was something that was fun, it was nice, but I also had uh, psychology as one of my electives. Um, and when I got to the media and marketing uh, lecture, I just wasn't something that was gelling with me really and I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought that I would you know something that what you think it could be and what it actually is is you know sometimes completely different uh, but what what I did really enjoy was the psychology modules and um, so that's when I thought that you know what I think maybe I should just switch over to psychology very good I mean a lot of people face that uh, journey mm -hmm. where they think that this is going to be the perfect arena for me for the rest of my life and then they realize, well, this kind of field of study is not something I'm interested in. For me, it was different. I, I kind of loved environmental work and being out in the outdoors, and I always thought there was something. Although, I actually initially wanted to be a pilot, interestingly. And then I decided... I actually didn't even know that about you. Yeah, yeah. I wanted <laughs> to be a pilot, and then uh, someone told me you have to have 20-20 vision, and I didn't I always have a glasses. But apparently, you don't have to have 20-20 vision. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, people go through that, and I think it's a it's a journey you have to go through to mm -hmm. find the space that you want to be in. All right, and then from from that, you've done work now on radio stations at a young age, uh, one of the youngest presenters, and that's, that's a great achievement. Okay. Um, but then it comes to the fact that you now with Accidental Muslims. So what is your vision for Accidental Muslims 2.0 2018 going forward? Okay, well, you know, being being uh, a young person. Uh, 20 years old. I think that uh, Accidental Muslims also, you know, it's an organization that has been uh, started up by, you know, quite young individuals. So I hope that with Accidental Muslims Dub and being a young person, like I mentioned, I hope to involve more younger people uh, with Accidental Muslims. More younger ideas, greater innovations, uh, and greater, you know, uh, sort of ways in which we can involve the youth uh, in, in doing, you know, great stuff. And also getting them, giving them this platform to showcase their talents and their, person, their great personalities. And being with Accidental Muslims and, you know, 
listening to the podcast that they've done, uh, that you've done as well. Uh, I'm quite amazed to see that, you know, there's so many amazing uh, individuals and personalities that reside within our communities who go unnoticed. Mm. So Accidental Muslims is a great platform to then showcase this. And I'm so glad to be a part of such an amazing initiative. Oh, that's super. I will wish you all the best from the team. Uh, I hand over the reins officially to you. Thank You're my you. sister, so I can shake your hand. <laughs> uh, and uh, and I, I think for me, for me, my goal and purpose really was mm. exactly as you said. I also knew a lot of people in Durban, specifically, who had such amazing talent, but no one speaks about them. No one celebrates them. You know, no one showcases them. Mm. And when I started an organization here called. Um, the Haraka Network, which now Change Network, uh, it seems to be changing. It was just my idea saying, what can I do? I want to make a change and I have some time. And I, and, I, and I just put it out there. I literally just put it out there. I said, Allah, you take this. Here's my, I'm tying my camel. I'm starting something. I want to make a change and I'm putting it out there. And I want to work with any organization, any people, I'm mm-hmm. partner with them and develop. And so it happened. Not even a month later, Allah blessed me to be part of AccidentalMuslims.com. And Brother Khalil and, and, and Brother Zahir really just literally gave the reins to me in Durban and said, Nazir, this is our model, this is the, 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 the microphone we use, this is the software we use, here's everything on a platter, it's already working for us, just use the same thing. And I pretty much took copy and paste here in Durban. Um, the support from, from far away in Cape Town was just amazing, I could any time, you know, and alhamdulillah blessed us with, 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 with technology, so what's up, hey guys, I'm struggling, what do I do here? Yeah. And then from, from the first meetup, they flew down all the way with their own costs, just to come and help me set up the first meetup, um, and we, that was such a success, we had some great, uh, it was all females, yes, yes, uh, guests, so women's month, women's August, month. So, yeah, yeah, August, yeah, so I mean, it's just a couple of months that we've done in Durban, and, and it's already taken off, and I think that's... The, the winning formula is the, the target market. The target market is younger people. And yes, we have elderly, we, we have uh, more experienced, more wiser okay. members who've joined us, who've interviewed and who participate. But again, the, the platform was to young people. And I think they, young people, when you meet them, they want to express themselves. They want a space that they feel comfortable in. And these meetups and the interviews and the people, it just feels hope homely to them. It feels right. like they can connect to that, you know. Mm-hmm. So again, my purpose and behind it was really to, to set that up. And and, it, and, and and it's just, for me, being a door that is open, but also my mind has been open. I mean, I'm meeting people who I thought, literally, um, the, the one that always drives me home is in Kosinati, um, in Kosipona rather, uh, Uthman right. Pongose. Mm-hmm. I mean, this guy is like from a, you know, a impoverished community, but he just has traveled the world through one thing, an idea that he wants to help people with HIV and AIDS. That's one thing. He just said, I want to do that. He made that his intention. He made it his goal. And no matter what came, no matter if it was you know, personal issues, it was family issues, it was financial issues, nothing could stop his vision and his goal. And if, that, if, if we can just take that home, that if we have an idea, stick to it and be conscious of Allah, that it's Allah's plan at the end of the day. So you do what you can and then give it to Allah. Let him handle it. And that's what he did. It's, a, it's such a lesson that I've learned from that. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, being a part of it, you know, when you had brought it to Delvin and, you know, as a sister, you always have to help your brother with whatever he's doing. Uh, and, you know, helping him across this. And, you know, you learn about so many people. You learn about it, you know, how they are. And, and really, you know, like I mentioned, it's like I never knew, you know, the type of people who were interviewing, you know, what really goes on, you know, behind their closed doors in terms of that, you know, they have so much for us to offer. And, you know, there was no showcase. There was no platform for this. And uh, even at the meetups, you know, what I really liked was the first meetup we had, the networking that we did, you know, after all the guests spoke, that was something which I went home and I think I messaged all of my friends and I told them about this because it was something we never had. It was something that, you know, there wasn't any, uh, you know, of this because there is, you know, many of the uh, other types of events that you could go through. But as a girl, uh, you know, these types of events are not obviously advisable for you to go through as a young girl, uh, you know, and having anyone with you. But this was a great initiative because you're in an Islamic environment and you know it's a safe environment. So you're coming, you're networking. I had brought a friend, uh, you know, along, who's a medical uh, authorist and prestigious, she's studying that. And um, she had spoken to so many people and they actually wanted to start up, you know, a charity together, um, aiding people, you know, who are in, in need of, you know, uh, prosthetics and things like that. So for me, this was something which is absolutely amazing. Mm.
just one meeting and already the doors have opened. Alhamdulillah. 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 But Nazir, we're going to ask you a few questions. Uh, and you know, the first one I have for you, and I think many people um, who follow you on social media know this, that you're a man of many talents. I thought you were going to say I had to take too many selfies. <laughs> Embarrassing That selfies. too. <laughs> that too. But um, you know, you're a man of many talents and you're involved in so many things. So, so what gets you started in your day? What gets you motivated to do all of this? Because I can't, I can't even keep up with your social media. Alhamdulillah. Well, it's a good question. <laughs> I ask myself the same thing every time I get up. I sleep late and then I wake up early and I miss my fajr and I get so upset and then, they that, and then that's the realization comes in. And I say, what is my purpose in life? And when, when I saw the signal of activism will come, the, the slogan, it was live with purpose. And I thought, that is exactly what I think of. Exactly what the first thing I get up in the morning and I say, what is my purpose? And then you get people that I meet who may be atheists or who are you know, leaning towards, there's no God. And the question they ask me is, what's the purpose of us living on this earth? And to them, those who have no consciousness of a God will believe there is no purpose, that they're going to die and there's nothing after that. There's literally nothing after that. So I say, why live in despair? Why don't you live in hope? And so when I wake up in the morning, I think, what is my purpose in life? Okay, forget whatever happened, move on from yesterday and just take this new day at a, at a task. And when you ask the question of so many things I'm involved in, and it's actually a weakness and a strength. And I've, I've seen that now after living for 31 years, is I see that as a strength and a weakness. I, I, maybe I need to one day, hopefully, find a little spot for myself <laughs> on this earth and make sure that that's what my cocoon is. But on the other hand, my personality is not like that. Mm-hmm. Today I'll be taking photographs. Tomorrow I'll be giving a speech about leadership. Another day I'll be sorting out some illegal company that's taken over a wetland. Uh, the next day I'm interviewing someone and asking them to come. The next day I'm at home with my wife and cook- cooking and you know, yeah. making something interesting at home. Uh, you know, it's just, I think that excites me. It's that the opportunities are there. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, I, and I, when I, I think we interviewed uh, Brother Sandile yes, Tuala. And he told me he learned, and I knew it, we were just having a chat out at a coffee shop. And he told me he learned something from me. And what he said he learned was the fact that uh, I told him that any, at any door that knocks, if opportunity knocks, they just open that door and take it. Mm. Don't think twice. And I said, that it's kind of exactly what I, what I am, you know. I just say, let's try it. So what? I mean, if it, if it doesn't work out, alhamdulillah, at least I learned something in that process. Absolutely. Uh, the next question I have for you uh, is something um, which I want to know is that in terms of, uh, what is your favorite uh, Quranic ayah that you like to live by? No, oh, okay. That's a question I ask everyone else, <laughs> right? But I think, to me, it's not just one verse. It's hard to, to bring it down to one verse because then I can mention so many. And, mm-hmm. you know, the amazing thing is when I really found the love for the Qur'an was through Halakha at the MSA when I was part of the Muslim wow. Student Association. I promise you, Halakha, halakha changes your perspective uh, completely because you start not only reading the Qur'an in English and, and, and understanding it from uh, a tafsir point of view, but you start living it. You start learning the concepts, and, and I, what I always loved about the halakha of the MSA was you brought it down to practicality. So at the end, the brothers will say, So, guys, how can we now practice this? So, you learned Al Rahman, or you read Surah Al Asr, you understand Allah speaks about time and how important time yeah, is, right. and that man is a loss, and etc. So, now what? Yeah, okay, good, you understand it. How are you going to practice it? So, that was just beautiful. So, halakha really pulled me up, and, and, and so I can't choose one verse, but I love one surah, uh, and the surah is Ar-Rahman. Yeah. And for many reasons. One is, it speaks about nature, right? It speaks about Allah's creation, and He says, how can you deny? And again, when I wake up in the morning, I think, what is my purpose? I ask, uh, the same question is, how can I deny the existence of God? It's impossible. I mean, you just think of all the sciences of this world, and you get bewildered. How um, I, I work with GIS, Geographic Information Systems, okay. and so I use a lot of Google Earth imagery. Mm-hmm. Uh, to look at people developing pieces of land in a wetland and I got to see what date and I'll go back to historical images and see what date and see which land pass looks like. That's a long geographic story. But interestingly, whenever I go into Google, uh, especially try this on Google Earth, uh, download the program and you type in you know, your home address for instance and watch what Google Earth does. So wherever the, the image was, it'll start circulating the Earth and then slowly zooming from a large zoom to a closer zoom you know, and microscoping right. into where you live. And then you realize how small you are because that still it's showing your house and the screen is about this size, right? And all of a sudden it was this huge earth and then it goes smaller and smaller and smaller into where you were and who you are. 
It's just this minute thing. Yeah. That alone yeah. tells you it didn't happen on a bomb that exploded a million years ago. Impossible. That just doesn't ever make sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, Alhamdulillah, that Surah Rahman, if you read it and understand it, every verse, and, and why would someone repeat something? Why Allah repeat? You know, when we repeat something, is for us to understand it better. And Allah is saying that. It. How can you deny? Mm-hmm. How can you deny? How can you deny? Constantly. You give us a few verses. Look at the sun. Look at the moon. How can you deny? How can you deny? That's such a beautiful thing. Absolutely. But I think uh, that's all the time that we have for uh, right now on this live. So thank you so much, uh, Mr. Nazir Jamal, uh, for everything that you've done for accidental Muslims. Mr. Nazir Jamal. <laughs> Brother Nazir Jamal, for everything you've done for accidental Muslims. And, and don't worry, he won't be going uh, very far. He'll still be conducting uh, interviews for us. And as well, he'll be uh, at our meetups as well. So don't uh, be despaired. Don't stop crying. He'll still be with us, um, uh, inshallah, um, with accidentalmuslims.com. But uh, for everyone watching this live, be sure that if you are in Durban, uh, there is going to be a meetup next Tuesday, which is the 20th of February 2018. Uh, we're going to be meeting up at Legends Diner, which is on 460 Peter Makaba at Ridge Ridge Road. And our guests, uh, Uncle Ejiz Kamisa, Masood Bunga, the comedian, as well as a lovely couple, Muntaz and Ahmed Abdul Latif. So it's definitely something you don't want to miss. So get on to um, our website and RSVP for the dub and meetup. We'd love to meet you all there. Inshallah. Thank you so much for everyone for, for your support and your du'as and your prayers and really so much of love that you showed um, it is it is a really great experience it, it's not an easy one it's a lot of hard work behind the scenes but it's to me it was something that I'll never forget I'd love to thank the brothers and sisters of AccentalMuslim.com in terms of the core structure who, who are really behind it Brother Khalil and Zaheer and your team thank you for believing in me it really it really has been a great journey and I hope to see you guys soon Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh